Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we're now uh, taking our first hot topic, and that is that fuel subsidy removal is essential for Nigeria's economic reset. That's according to President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Our guest this morning is, morning is Mukta Mohammed, international finance and economic analyst, talking to us from Lagos State this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mukta. Thank you for having me. Our economic reset, fuel subsidy removal, where, well, the common man does not even understand why that is so important, especially given the realities on ground. Help us uh, walk through this statement of the president, um, what your feeling is about what he said and what the uh, real economic realities are, um, you know, if you measure that with the statement that he made. Well, thank you again. I, I think the president um, is trying to justify the removal of subsidy, um, which he has done since May 29. And again, uh, I was an advocate for removal of subsidy. I've always thought that the petroleum subsidy was a scam. I was doing Nigeria economy no good. But I always thought that in removal of subsidy in the, in the consumption sector of the petroleum sector, we should be, uh, government should be subsidizing some area of Nigerian life, knowing that our life evolve around petrol. Um, so I think what he's trying to justify it was a tough decision. But again, uh, when he said Nigeria was going broke, we are aware of, we're already aware, aware of that. When the former president said, um, President Buhari said, subsidy was going to stop in June, but he approached it stopped in May without making plans. And up to this moment, I don't think any uh, concrete plan has been put to alleviate the sufferings of Nigeria. Because what we've seen uh, thus far over the removal of subsidy, we've seen um, the three tiers of government earning so much, um, but the, the people's life have gone from, from even worse to worse uh, by the day. And so I, I think um, the removal of subsidy was a good policy in trying to unlock investment in the petroleum stock sector, but up to this moment, we've not seen those investments. Well, rather, we are seeing a lot of uh, companies trying to sell up their offshore property and leave Nigeria because of the insecurity. Uh, removal of subsidy was supposed to create job. Rather, what we've seen that removal of subsidy has created more unemployment. Uh, removal of subsidy was supposed to boost our reserves, so we, we bring a level playing fee for everybody to begin to import uh, petroleum products into the country and create competitiveness within, but up to this moment, NNPC still remain the sole importer of petroleum product. Uh, removal of subsidy also was supposed to stabilize our currency, whereby government is not spending so much in importing refined petroleum product, allowing um, uh, private players to do that. But we've seen that that, that, uh, that has not helped, rather he have depreciated our reserve and our exchange rate has gone higher. Removal of subsidy was also supposed to be one of the key drivers of uh, 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 um, the power sector, because when you see removal subsidy, that means the gas and other so, but rather we've seen power gone really, really bad. So when you look at that, by and by what the president is saying, he has taken the hard decision, which was nice, but the effect on the people was not alleviated because again, there are a lot of things they were supposed to do that they didn't do. Uh, we're talking about if you remove subsidy, you begin to talk of um, living wages. If you remove subsidy, we are not supposed to see infrastructural development we're supposed to see that power will come in so that we know that we are no more buying diesel or generator i mean um, generators or buying uh, diesels uh, rather we have power constant power we only buy uh, fuel for our cars and diesels for our cars but um, it's still the same effect so uh, if you look at that by and by what the president has said so the people removal of subsidy has not brought the needed um, change that he promised us uh, but removal of subsidy has brought more coffee, more money to the coffee of government, both the treaty of government, but they've not seen the impact on the people. So that's what I think if you say government have had more money, definitely removal of subsidy has done that. But to the people, they are more impoverished than where they were in May 29 when he came into power. Okay, two questions. Let me just start with the, the first one. Um, this, there is always this talk about the fact that the government is subsidizing fuel. And, or, but they're not telling the people and all that. How do you marry this? Fuel subsidy has been removed. The reality on ground is that there's some form of subsidy going there, but the government is not telling us. Which part do you stand 
Do you think the government is really subsidizing it? And why are they not telling us? Well, I think the government is subsidizing it, and they are not telling us. Uh, NNPC is the one going to, uh, that are the ones uh, um, suffering that bunch. And um, unfortunately, they are a private limited company. So in their earnings report, a uh, detailed report, very soon we'll see the truth of that. So the government can no more hide it from them. Because why people are saying government are subsidizing, at the time of the removal of subsidy, the price of um, crude petroleum oil was about, I think, $78 per barrel. But as I'm talking now, it has gone to as high as $85. So when you look at that, you are supposed to say, okay, the removal of subsidy, that means the price of refined petroleum product will keep on oscillating because the price of uh, food oil have not been steady since the removal of subsidy. I think that's why people are saying, look, subsidy has gone. And then when you look at our own case, we still are importing refined petroleum product up to this moment because the uh, most talk about Dangote refinery and the uh, uh, Potaco refinery have not started production or, or where they are in their testing stage. So they've not started bringing those products into the market. So uh, what it means is that we're importing a lot of this refined petroleum product. Then the challenge was that when you import this product, you are not importing them in the Naira, you are importing them with dollars. And what it means that the exchange rates also made, make these things go higher because at the time government removed subsidy, exchange rate was about 450. That is uh, where the uh, official was still standing at 390, I mean 370. And that what was used for, 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 the, for the official rate in terms of importing petroleum products to the country. But as it stands now, the exchange rate you and I know that has gone very high. At a point it was doing 1,600 officially and 1,800 in the parallel market. So when you look that, you, then you, you, you'll be forced to marry the two together and say that um, definitely government is paying subsidy in one way or the other, either through the price of petroleum products not uh, being steady in price for this thus far, or the exchange rate has also brought a little bit of subsidy payment there. Is it a matter of pride or something why they're not telling us? Because I thought maybe this would make them look good and say, okay, even if we stopped it, we're still doing some interventions in it, you know, and the people will say, okay, you're trying for us. But what is, why is it so hard in coming out plain to tell us that, yes, we are giving some form of uh, subsidy? And they, they keep denying it. Well, it, it, because, again, you saw the... Hula Balu that happens with the removal of subsidy, the life of the ordinary Nigeria, and then you're coming back and telling them you are paying subsidy again, and their life has not improved. I think the government is looking at what the effect will be like. But I think, again, in the, li in the liar picture, the government is not paying the kind of subsidy also they would have been paying if this, if this uh, subsidy was not removed. Yeah, no matter what people try to say, whether government is paying more higher, so I think they are not going to be paying the subsidy if subsidy was not removed. That is one. And I think their major challenge in their own is the exchange rate. So if they peg it at the official rate, maybe the subsidy payment also will not be that uh, uh, much. So I think, um, and government knows that at this moment, you cannot increase petroleum price because the people have not even felt the impact of your recent increment, but it has not brought anything meaningful to the economy. So I think government is just trying to um, uh, not come out clear on this, and then they will tell you that they are hands up, they are deregulated. So now the sole import, the, the people they should talk to is NNPC. And NNPC will come out and say, look, we are not paying subsidy. In one hand, they are saying we are not paying subsidy. In the other hand, the marketer, those people that load from NNPC, those people that should know better are saying, NNPC is subsidizing for in one way or the other. So, uh, maybe Mala Nasru, Erufa, the former governor of Kaduna State, said that they have been subsidizing for more than what they met before. And you, you may agree with him somehow because of the exchange rate, not, not only because of the price of the product, but because of the exchange rate. You may agree with him, but I think uh, somehow, somehow we are paying subsidy, but the government is being careful because that means your policy is more or less like a policy some assault and that's it. But I think why the government also is not coming out clearly on that is because they believe that before the end of May, uh, I think um, Dangote refinery will start production, Potaco refinery will come on stream. So that will be an end to, to subsidy payment, importing of uh, um, refined petroleum products into the country. 
I'm even thinking that that might be the cause of the recent scarcity that we are seeing because government is beginning to look that we will soon start production. So let's ration what we have so that we don't have to import. We don't even have the resources. So since Dangote will come on stream and then the Potakon refining will come on stream, I think that's what I think is happening now that you are seeing those first scarcity in Abuja and some part of Lagos and Ogun State. So definitely in the long run, subsidy has gone, subsidy will be gone. I'm sure it will not stay uh, subsidy, no matter how small they are paying it. By the end of May, I think uh, subsidy will definitely become history. You can see that in uh, um, diesel. Diesel at the point was as high as 1,500. Today, diesel is selling for as low as 1,100. In MRS police station, you get it for 1,015 naira. So, and this is because um, Dangote finally came to the market with diesel. So, I expect that um, with the government also coming up with strategy that they can buy crude on, with naira, that also could be a game changer. We will see the, the, uh, what the government thinks they have lost in one hand in terms of payment of crude. Um, a refined petroleum product, they might be gaining in the other hand, and maybe that is why they are not saying anything yet. Well, I, I, I don't know, but as a person, I think it's a big shame that a government will be hanging their hopes on uh, the uh, market strategy, the largesse of a personal uh, uh, businessman, a private businessman like Dangote. You know, if he reduces I, I, the price. I, I tend to disagree when we say that. Because I always think that it's not in the business of government to be in business. Every economic in the world, there's no government that is involved in the key driver of the economic business. Government is only supposed to come up with regulatory framework to make sure those business are not detriment to their people. So what's their, their business in doing in having taxes. a refinery that does not work? Why not just give it out to people who are private businesses and then have competition in the market? Because this is more or less like a one-man business, and he can do whatever he wants. Well, when you talk about the refinery, it's not working. But I want you to know that NNPC is not NNPC Nigeria Limited. So, of recent, they signed a, a, an agreement with a private firm to make sure that they, they produce a hundred thousand barrel of, uh, of a refined petroleum product. So, um, it's not going to be only Dangote alone. Remember that we have modular refineries. We also have Boa refinery coming on stream in Akwaibon State. So it, it, it could always start with one. You just look at um, the, the telecom sector at a point, it was only MTN and then um, V Mobile. And at a point, they were telling us that, look, you know what, you can only, you, you can't do, uh, we can't do per second billing because it's not, we don't have the equipment, it's not possible. And when Glow came in and said, no, we are going to be doing per second billing, and people begin to die immediately within 48 hours. They all swell back to per second billing. So um, the first player always seems to be the one that have the market, and then when the second player come with something different, the market dynamics change. So I think um, that might just be what will happen when we when other refinery comes in steam. But like uh, the government, remember that these refineries were actually meant to be sold before now. Mm. And uh, President Obasanjo did it and sold it to the them. They call um, the company then was Blue Chip, um, formed by um, uh, the current uh, the current uh, man that had Dangote, uh, Dangote, uh, Aligo Dangote, and his, his friend uh, uh, Femi Otodola. Remember that the Mary Yaradwa came to Parau that revoked that sales because of the pressure from the Nigerian Labour Congress from Nupen, from Pengensin, that it's not yet time to give them those refinery, that those refinery can be turned around by government. They sold it for them at a, at a club. But up to now, we, 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 those refinery has not worked. Rather, we kept on doing turn around, maintain and turn around, maintain and that those money could have been used to build new refineries or build up to 15 modular refineries. So I think uh, what uh, I, I keep saying is that uh, uh, Dangote took the bull by the horn. He got the support of government. I won't. I won't say that he didn't get it. He got the support of government, and today he's there. So other also we get that same support. Boy is getting that same support. It might not be in the area of exchange rate, but at least he's getting those support from government in other areas. So um, we we must just give them the, the kudos, and I know that uh, private refineries are meant to be run, especially businesses are meant to be run by business businessmen and government is supposed to come up with the enabling environment. Look, we are complaining about power now and we still know the generation and distribution generation. The day we give generation to private sector, you see that they most talk about 10,000 megawatts 
will come on stream within two to three years. But once you leave it in the hands of government, there seems to be a lot of bureaucracy. So that's why any part, anywhere in the world, key, in, uh, key drivers of the economics are always in the hand of the federal, uh, of the of the private sector. But they make sure the federal, uh, the, the government has the one driving in terms of um, policies, regulation, and others to yeah, make sure but, that. The but do we have that kind of? Charged. Do we have those kind of policies that will regulate these people and uh, and force them to do the right thing by the people? Because when, when you look at, okay, let's take an ex example. The outcry of uh, Nigerians right now is on DSTV, for instance. DSTV just comes up and gives you rates that are crazy. DSTV Go TV price hikes sparks calls for regulatory action. That is one of the headlines on one of our newspapers this morning, Business NG. And people are looking for alternatives and all that. And it happens, even, even the service providers that you've mentioned, MTN, V-Mobile, and Glow and all that, they're asking for permission to still hike their tariffs. Okay, we saw a situation where the airlines going to London, for instance, were charging up to 3 million naira for a flight to London. And when Airpiece came and reduced the price, they came down, some of them even lower than Airpiece, which means they had the capacity to do this, but they didn't do it until they waited for competition. Is it a product of no regulation or good policies, or is it that it's just a free-for-all economy and anybody can do whatever he wants to do? Capitalism is free for all. That's number one. If you want to practice capitalism, it's free for all. Then, but when you look at the airline industry, and um, what some of these that I will go into them maybe so to make you know that they are, to let you know they are very different. In the airline industry, the challenge we have was the exchange rate. That was one. Um, a lot of these airlines' monies were not being paid. Their money was stopped here, and so what they did was they didn't open the cheap ticket for Nigerians. Well, many of the airpiece came, and remember that government also have paid some of those uh, airlines uh, as standing, and then airpiece came, competition came, and that's why we talk about competition. And all of a sudden, uh, they, they, they brought down their price. Even airpiece themselves started complaining that those prices have been brought down, and they are trying to make Nigerians not patronize airpiece any longer. Mm -hmm. So you could see that's what competition brings to the market. So regulators will always come up. But when, I, when you're a regulator, and I tell you my challenges in terms of operational challenges, you can't force me to begin to make losses. And that was what happened, why that was why an airline like uh, 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 Emirates said, look, we can't continue to make losses in Nigeria because we can't repatriate our money back, so we'd rather not come again. So those that's for the airline. For DSTV, um, again, there's competitors on DSTV, so it's based on uh, how, how, how competitive have they been with the competitors, with them, that they have swallowed the market maybe because of their content. Now it's all about content. And if you listen to the government, the government is in charge of generation in terms of power. And the government themselves have increased power due to exchange rate, uh, cost of energy, gas, and others. So you don't, the, the same things apply to some of these businesses too. So you can't be doing one roof for another and then doing one roof for the other. So their own costs also have gone up. So naturally, they also will increase their cost of that. So it's about regulate, regulation in the fact is, I think regulation when one we, is for them to make sure that what we are paid for are what we get in terms of quality. We have Standard Organization of Nigeria. We have Consumer Protection Agency. Then for the petroleum sector, you have uh, the former DPR. They are there to regulate, to make sure that uh, fuels are, um, PMS are sold, diesel are sold. And so sometimes, like I, like I always say, the problem is not we don't have regulators to come in there. The problem is that we don't, those regulators seem to not have a structure to, to work. So when a strong man comes in, you see the, those, regulation, those regulators begin to work very well. You saw it in NAFDA when we have the late dollar, uh, Dora Akinui. Mm. They were everywhere. The regulation was tough, but after she left, we were back to status quo. You are seeing that in NDLE, and you begin to ask yourself, all the years, what has been happening to all these drop kings? It's not that they just came up when uh, Buba Marwa took over. So the problem we have in Nigeria is that we don't build strong institutions. We rather build strong men. So it's, tomorrow, if we have somebody, the Consumer Protection Agency, that is out there doing the right thing, you will see that most of the companies that are busy, um, 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 so charging Nigerians will change 
So what is there is that we should learn how to make sure that we have structure, that we have regulations that are moved by structure and rule of law, justice. So once you have that, then you will not need to have a strong man to, to make things happen. So the challenge here is we don't have the structure. We rather be strong men. And when strong men are gone, we are back to start to school. Yeah, well, when you were talking about regulation, I was just thinking about the FCCPC, uh, the consumer protection that you mentioned also, that has sealed the Chinese uh, supermarket that was uh, selling in Yuan and preventing Nigerians from buying. And I was asking myself, if it is such a criminal to sell uh, things in foreign currency, why are the schools that are charging dollars not being closed? Why are hotels that are charging in dollars not being closed? Why are every other institution or all the other institutions that are charging in dollars within Nigeria not being closed, even though they are allowing Nigerians to do business with them, but the, the, the first currency is, is the dollar, and they are not doing anything about it, which means are they partial? It's just a question I'm asking myself. I don't know. Uh, I, like I said, rule of law. When there is no when there's no justice, some people get away with it. Mm. I think for me, it's um, you know you talk about the Chinese. They are, it's not that the Consumer Protection Agency were not aware of them until a, a newspaper, I think one of the media house yeah. came up and made that noise, and then it went on social media, and that was when the government responded and went that and be selling this. So it's not something that they start today or something they started yesterday or something they just start. You're talking about school fees. You don't even have to go far. Even the case of the governor of uh, Kogi State. State that have to pay off front of school fees, and yet nobody is reprimanding the school for, for even collecting dollars. So what are the other people in that school paying? Are they still paying dollars? Are the federal school paying dollars too? What have you done to sanction those schools? Mm. Some of the visa uh, collection agencies where Nigerians apply for visas are also doing the same thing. They tell Nigerians to pay in in, 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 in their currency, some of them collect pounds, some of them collect dollars for, for them to have. Nobody is doing anything about it. And they, these are not things that they are not involved. Some of these elites do not go and pay. They pay those money because they, they easily get it. So I think it's all about uh, uh, when they decide. When tomorrow, if New Central carried a report on agencies that are busy collecting dollars instead of Naira, then the government will clamp down on them tomorrow, then the next day. But once it's, nobody's talking about it, they turn a blind eye to whatever they are doing. Okay. Um, the second question, is, earlier on I said I had two questions. The second question is this. Um, a, a country, I think it's Kenya, removed fuel subsidy and then they found out that re removed some kind of subsidy. I don't know it's, if it is oil, but they found out that uh, the policy was detrimental to the to the people. Uh, so they brought it back in humility. So will it be such a bad thing if we reconsidered, uh, you know, having a systemic subsidy, so to speak, in Nigeria instead of the total removal? After all, now we seem to have the data. If the way they were using a humongous data that did not exist. Now we seem to have the data uh, which will enable us to know for, for a fact what we are paying for. Will it be such a bad thing to reverse this fuel subsidy removal? I can assure you, if by tomorrow the say subsidy is being paid, the data of terms of oil consumption will go up. Because then they will tell you that some people before now and not used to go out with their cars because they were paying from their pockets. So since government started paying, they started having their two or three cars. You know the way sometimes uh, in this country, some ministers will come up like, uh, even if he has apologized, the minister of power are coming to say that the reason why Nigeria are paying so much of price is because they leave their refrigerator and their AC on when they are out of their houses. <laughs> so sometimes when you now begin to hear some um, statement why uh, subsidy must not be removed, uh, as they remove and why the volume has gone up since subsidy removed, you begin to ask yourself, what are we doing now? The Kenya experience, um, you see what Kenya did was to remove subsidy in um, uh, um, 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 diesel because those are what the, lot, the industries they normally use. So to bring down the cost of uh, um, their goods and services. Well, unfortunately, that did not work out well. The cost of goods were still going up because most of the industries in Kenya 
when uh, most of the industry in Kenya was not, was not able to produce enough for the Kenyan people. So, in some way, most of what the Kenyan people normally we consume in their households were being imported. And so, government looked at it, okay, you know what? We need to take a cut on this. This is not working. So, um, we'll take up tariff from imported products that comes in outside the shore of Kenya to, this, uh, to, 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 to Kenya that we know most of our household normally make you so they took a bite of their revenue and that helped them bring down inflation it was not just the removal of subsidy that was the challenge it's just the same thing that's happening in nigeria you remove subsidy but most of the uh, companies are using diesels so how do that how does that help that would still mean cost of goods and services when diesel went up cost of goods and services went up so kenya removed uh, this in diesel or well, they realized that you know what um this is not working so they they brought back the subsidy Still in diesel, but in petroleum, they made sure that they didn't, they were not paying us, so they were looking at the productive sector. So now that we are telling people to bring goods into our country, if we do not pay subsidy on diesel for our industries, that means we will finally kill our industries. So it's going to be a win win situation. We'll go back to pay this um, subsidy on diesel for our industry and also let other people import these goods. And that brought down inflation. Competition that came in. So that is one. But when you look at the Nigerian case now, inflation keeps going high and people keep trying to do the wrong thing, saying this is the challenge. The challenge for inflation has been that exchange rate has gone high. The challenge for inflation has been that port rate is high. Even when the Naira was coming down, uh, exchange rate in terms of when you bring goods and services were still going up. So how do you marry that together to make sure that goods and services will come down? So it's more or less that if you want to see a policy, it, like you said, anywhere, the government must pay subsidy in one thing or the other. In the UK, government pays subsidy in energy. In the US, government pays subsidy in terms of public transport. So there's no way in the world that government does not pay subsidy for one thing or the other. It's only in Nigeria that government complain of paying subsidy for the people, even when they are not even paying total subsidy for the people. Because a lot of subsidy in Nigeria is marred by corruption. So until we get the, those data right, because in these developed countries, those data are right. They know the number of poor people by and by their income. They have the data. They know where the poor people live. They know how to subsidize for the poor. They know where the poor people normally go to work, where they stay. So transportation in those areas are subsidized. Education in those areas are subsidized. Infrastructure in those areas are subsidized. Even tax payment in some areas are subsidized because of the type of people that live here. Because they have all this data. But here... Yeah, we tend to copy and paste, but we forget that structures was what made whatever policy they are bringing work because there's a structure. So I think uh, the most thing that we need to do more in Nigeria is we need to have a structural reform whereby we begin to look at data, using data as a means to drive our economy, to know those that are very poor, those that are poor, those that are middle class, and those that are very rich, not by the amount of money you have in your bank account. It's only in Nigeria you do that. I don't know. I, I don't know the problem with data. Data in Nigeria seems to be a cash cow. You use data to your advantage. You know, uh, you go to a particular place where there are five people and you're doing a census and you're having a hundred people. It's, it's just like, like the, the, the librarian um, uh, election that entered the Guinness Book of Records where uh, people the people that were up to about, is it 11,000? They did an election and the winner got like um, 250,000 votes <laughs> for, for uh, a country whose uh, uh, eligible voters were like 11,000 or something. I don't know. Data is being manipulated in Nigeria. And I don't know that when we will get to that pos position where we can get true data that will talk to us about what is happening. Today on the papers, we just saw that 98,000 women die annually out of, uh, because of smoke from firewood. <laughs> and I was just laughing, like, okay, well, that may or may not be true, but where did they get the data from? Now, the question is, why is it such a challenge in Nigeria to get the correct data? Because I know we don't have it. Even if we have it, we don't use it. So why is it such a challenge? Because people don't trust the government. It's all about trust. Data is trust. If I give you my data, I mean I'm, I'm giving you my information. And I'm sure that you are going to, to protect my information. The NCC have been talking about some agency that they said they were they going to uh, 
I'm deal with them because they 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 they, 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 they expose people data. The rule of privacy. Have you been? In, I don't know whether it's happened to you. Somebody calls you from the blues and begin to sell a product to you, to you, mm. and you begin to ask yourself, where did they get your phone number from? So I think the challenge is that we don't even trust uh, the government to be able to uh, uh, keep our data private, private data for us. Because sometimes we, again, because of our attitude in terms of secrecy, when government is asking for our data, we say, oh, they have come again to use our data to, to, to enrich themselves, not to help us. Because what we are giving data before, somebody has used it to his advantage. I think it's all about trust. Do you really trust the government to do what they want to do with the data that and do we really have a date before there used to be a national agency for data bank even if that agency was in coma too so not really but today i think they are supposed to be up and doing it's only in nigeria you you you, you just had i'm sure you are aware of the of the news that uh, we will still have another new national id card yeah. after taking nigeria through this process now they are saying oh we are coming up with a new national ID card that will be driven by the bank. You have an ID card that you can use as ATM that you use. So you see that uh, we keep on, um, you, you go to uh, immigration, you have to put your data, you go to update your, 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 your uh, maybe you, you go out to say, okay, you want to update uh, your NCC, you want, I mean, you go to your phone provider, it, you, you upload another data, you, you go to the airline, they upload another data, and so it's all about everybody seems there's no one room, one place to to to, to run data. I think for me, uh, that is um, the challenge. Okay, uh, well, um, let's just go back to what we're really talking about, the fuel subsidy removal. Um, in, in what ways have, uh, has this helped to grow the economy of Nigeria? Because from the words of uh, uh, the, the president, it was to make sure that we don't go bankrupt. Where are we standing now in that, uh, I don't know, in that picture, you know? Are we still going bankrupt? Are we better than we used to be? Are we on our way to recovery? Where do you see Nigeria at this moment after removing fuel subsidy for 11 months now? I think um, we are not where we, we, we were before. We are not where we want to be. But I think uh, we are on our way there because, again, like I said, uh, subsidy will create a lot of investment. We have not seen this investment. Hopefully, we start seeing them coming. The only one we have seen was the one driven by Danguti. And remember that this has been on for a while. So when it comes to some of this investment, you don't just see the result overnight. It takes time because it, it's been a long time uh, these things have been there. So where we are now if what we had before now was anything to go by then maybe it would have been a, a country that would have been on its knee if we're still paying subsidy according to the government data so but where, where we are now i think it's not too bad right? but again it's not where we have really really desired that will be with the removal of subsidy because at the removal of subsidy nobody emphasizes that um, the exchange rate also will go up. So sometimes the challenge with Nigeria is that you are dealing with one issue one hand, and the, the other hand, another issue comes up that meditate stops you from seeing the results of the previous uh, um, decision. Because again, mobile subsidy is a is a physical policy, and then what are the monetary policy been? Are there been a synergy between the physical and the monetary side to see that once a policy comes in, those other one trying to complement each other to drive it. But if you look at it, mobile subsidy created inflation and the cost of goods and services went up. Floating of the Naira created another uh, bottleneck. Cost of goods and services went up. So you see that there, there, there was no synergy in one person trying to address the need. And normally the monetary policy will come up with monetary policy decision. Then the physical side are the one to come up with a balance to make sure that the shock from the monetary policy does not affect the people that much, does not affect job creation, does not affect household income. But in this case, the two policy from the physical and the monetary came at the same time and they were detriment to the people. So when you look at that, you say, fine, um, in the short term, it has not been worry. And I, I wasn't expecting it to be worry because when you are used to doing something the same thing all over and over. It's insane for you to think you have a, a, a different result. But when you change to do something 
different from what you did before. It's not immediate you see those results. It okay. takes months, it could take years, but those results will definitely come. Okay. Uh, well, I thank you for your optimism, and I hope that uh, as the nation journeys towards prosperity, the people within the nation also will journey towards prosperity. I'd like to thank you, uh, Mukta, for coming on the show and sharing your thoughts this morning with us. Thank you for having me. Mm. We've been talking to Mukta Mohammed, international finance and economic analyst. He was talking to us from Lagos here. We'll take a very short break, and when we return, we'll use about 10 minutes to talk to our second guest. Stay with us.